Hey guys, No Nonsense Know How here, and today's gonna be another fast paced review video. This one on the O Sheep electric foldable scooter. This is the Q11S, not released yet. So these are gonna be available on Amazon, I believe, and also their website, so I'll drop that link down below. But they asked if they could send me a sample to try out, so I said, yeah, absolutely. And Jen really liked the Gyro scooter, the last one I had, so she's kind of been asking to get one too, and she'll probably be in this video, hopefully she likes it. So they're advertising a max speed of 25 kilometers an hour, or 15.5 miles per hour. The weight on this is 40 pounds, uh, or 48 net with the box and everything. The range, 18.6 miles to 23.6. We'll see about that though. And then the max load, 264 pounds. It came very well packaged, double boxed. So let's slide her on out of here and see what it's all about. No damage that I see on the inside box. They did a very nice job protecting everything with these foam blocks. We got our accessories in the center here. Leatherman, made in USA, top notch piece. Check them out if you want a good quality multi-tool. Nice action on the kickstand. This has got a unique bar design. Looks like it has thread in pieces that are probably in the box. You got a cable driven rear disc brake. The disc is not bent or anything like what you saw when I had the Varla. A aluminum frame underneath and I don't see any damage at all so the packaging uh, did a good job. The tires are airless so I think they have like a honeycomb tire design in there. I, I'd like to see that because you don't have to worry about a flat but ten tends to be a little bit rougher of a ride if you have airless but uh, that's nice. You got telescoping front forks on it and a cable driven drum brake on the front. One of the best features on this scooter is the fact that it has a removable battery. Look at that, it takes a key to remove the battery too. So very, very exciting stuff. Let's open up the box. All right, here's our thread on bars. Look at that, what a nice design. These grips feel high quality. A 42 volt 1.5 amp charger, a cell phone holder made out of aluminum, set of keys, and the battery. Oh, this is really nice that it's removable and looks like you can plug it into the, you know, just take it out and charge it inside your house instead of dragging the whole scooter in to charge it. Seems real nice. I like this. I like that it's red too. So there's no mistaken red danger battery right there. And the first thing you always want to do is plug your battery in, charge it up fully before riding the scooter, get the most life out of it. Should get a red light once we plug that in. There's the red. So let's wait for that to turn green. The handle grips are marked left and right. So all you got to do is, well, you want to make sure your cables are routed properly and then slide this right through. You might want to put some Loctite on these because they just thread in and, and the threads are the only thing that keeps them in. But I'll, I'll leave them like this for now. Oh, you got a bell on there too. That's a nice quality bell. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, which, oh, look at that. This side actually has reverse threads. So lefty loose or lefty tighty. By the way, I was just looking through the box to see if there's a user manual with specific instructions for these, but there's no user manual included in this. I would assume when you guys get yours, though, there will be one. Oh, check out the bar lock that's included. It's got this spring-loaded tab, and if you line it up right, you just drop that down and it automatically locks right on there. Look at that. Oh, this is nice and lightweight, too. Now, that does keep the bars offset, but what's cool about this is if you're putting it in a suitcase, let's say, or something, you can easily remove these. It's uh, by far the best bar design I've seen over the, the Varla and the Gyroar. Uh, this is much nicer. I like it. I'm liking what I see with this post lock so far. Let's try it out. You fold it all the way and then, like that, just push it and it locks in. So it's nice and rigid and sturdy. I, again, with the gyro and this, I don't see a way for adjustments on this if this gets sloppy over time, but it seems like a nice robust design and we'll see how, how well it holds up. For these grips, the left side is aligned properly, no adjustment needed, but the right side you can see it's sticking up like that. So all you need is a three millimeter Allen and you loosen these two set screws, one, two, and then you can rotate it as desired and snug those back down. Now it didn't include a three millimeter, but it's possible that they'll make changes to that in the future since like I said, this is kind of a, a prototype. They didn't fully release this yet. On the cell phone holder, you got a three millimeter Allen right here to remove. You want to apply a dab of Loctite on there and that's a stainless steel screw and then we can just thread this right back down. With it snug, that's nice and secure. Now, this is not spring loaded. Let's see how well it holds my phone. Of course, you could 
mount this going the other way too if you wanted. Uh, with my case, well, yeah, that's it's pretty nice actually. I like that. It's simple and works well. Looks like this screen has a plastic coating on it. I'll take that off. Now, while it didn't include the three mil hex for the grips, it did include the five mil. And so you want to position these brake levers. With those tightened down, the lever action feels great and no adjustments needed at this point. If you do need to adjust the brakes and tighten them up, you have your quick adjuster up here. You spin this out to tighten them. This is your front and this is your rear brake. Or say if I wanted to do a major adjustment on the rear brake, you just use this five millimeter Allen, loosen um, this bolt and then pull that cable, just like a bicycle, no, nothing big. Big at all. Uh, and I do recommend going over this unit and checking all of the nuts and bolts before you ride it. Always a good idea to do that. God forbid they, they make a mistake and you go and you know crash. So uh, this rear fender, it's nice. Uh, looks like it's gonna keep the mud off me good and fairly robust. Uh, it is plastic though, so it would be nice if it was made out of something a little heavier duty, but it's not bad. And we're not fully charged on the battery yet, but I'd like to drop that in. So it looks like you'd put the key in, rotate that pin, and then you put that in flush, rotate the pin back. Oh, no, see this, so that pushed the battery out. And yeah, if you hold the battery when you rotate this, that pin locks the battery in very secure. Doesn't look like you need a key to start it. Just a power button right here. Hold that for two seconds. Fires up. I like that it has a dedicated light button right here. Oh, and this is in kilometers an hour. So we'll have to see if we can switch that. We got zero miles on the trip and five bars on the battery. We'll still charge that up more though. The light's adjustable, so I can point that up. Has a reflector built into it also. Cables are kind of blocking it a touch, but we'll see how bright that is at night. And then it does have an LED tail light, which turns to a brake light when you hit the brakes. To turn the light off, just long press that again. And let's see, to, we're on mode three right now. So it's got three speed modes. Number one is 15 kilometers an hour or 9.3 miles an hour. Number two is 12.4 miles an hour. And speed three is 15.5. It does have the 10 second cruise control too. So if when you're riding this, just like on the gyro, or if you hold this in one position for 10 seconds, it will automatically go into cruise control. And they advertise a 500 watt motor. These are just some specs I was looking up earlier, earlier and a uh, 20 degree hill climb. To switch the speed mode, it's just a double tap on the power button, goes to two, double tap again. And then instead of going back to three, it actually just climbs back up with each double press. So it goes back and forth. It doesn't do anything when you push the throttle unless you give it a good push first and then it'll engage. It feels like a nice soft transition of power. To power it down, you just long press that. It'll power down and then let's remove this and fully charge it. So, well, actually I don't have to. Look at that. Just charge it right in the board. So your one security measure is gonna be removing the battery if you leave this somewhere. Very easy to throw in the backpack or something. But it actually has security built into the app too, which I'll show you later in this video. I usually ride with my brake levers pointed much further down, like I just had them and you saw that kind of got in the way of the headlight. But if you put them at a more horizontal position, those cables route around the headlight just fine. I just happen to be taller, so when I'm reaching down, you know, my, my hands are usually like already kind of pointed down that way. Let's give it the rigidity shake test. Oh yeah, I like that. That's the one thing on the Varla, when you shake that, especially because it has suspension and the bar design on it, it's got so much play in the bars. When you hit bumps, the, the bars actually rock back and forth so much, but this has a, a very rigid uh, feel to it. Let's try out that front suspension. And yeah, it's got a nice little stiff telescoping force. We'll have to try those on the bumps though and see how it works. So, again, since the gyro, I'm starting to be a fan of scooters without the full suspension. It's just less stuff to brake. Of course, it's not going to be as good off-road. And since this is only rear-wheel drive, you're not going to have as much traction. But uh, yeah, let's charge her up and go from there. Yeah, we got the green light means go. Not to turn this into a comparison video, but here is one look at the gyro next to the O Sheep. And I gotta say, I've already, I already said it, but the biggest advantages so far I'm seeing is you have larger front forks, telescoping forks. Look at the, the size difference on that compared to the, the gyro, and these are already leaking grease or oil out of them. That swappable battery, and then also the fact that it has no, uh, you know, air in either of the tires. This one actually has air in the front tire and then a solid rear tire instead of solid on both. And Jen's gonna be coming with us today, riding the gyro, so we'll kind of see what, what the range, how they compare on them. Uh, so let's, let's get going. Don't forget your helmet. All 
right, I've laid down a couple kilometers and she's running good. Running this the whole time on speed three and I'm not sure how the LED screen's gonna come across on the video because it doesn't look great. But So as I was showing you before, to get going, you can't just hit the throttle. You gotta give it a push start and then hit the throttle. And there's a very soft engagement. We're on speed three and that's full throttle right now on this. Uh, so it does get up, up higher to speed, but it, it's certainly really, really soft on uh, off the line. Like, And you heard that, that double beep there? Now we're on cruise. So if we let go of it, I'd like to be able to turn that off. I don't like that it goes on cruise automatically. Uh, but if I just, now if you hit the brake, all right, it turns off the cruise. Or if you just tap the throttle, it'll turn it off too. We were going to put some miles on the path, but it's just a really a little too soft right now. So let's take this on some of the gravel like usual and see how it does as, as I did that with the gyro. I'm, I'm uh, full throttle right now. And well, it's, it's having some trouble motoring through this so all right it's actually it's it's pretty much just staying on like that's that soft start mode it doesn't actually kick the power in until you get moving a decent pace but as you can see it is it is going through this stuff uh let me try to point the camera down here oh actually it just said cruise control so now it's just it's just locked on this but of course we're only doing uh 13 kilometers an hour these tires are handling the rocks it's certainly doable well, we're going top speed at 25 right now. We can see the gyro uh, just kind of flew by us a little bit. What's your speed say? 30. So she's doing 30 kilometers an hour and this tops out at the uh, advertised 25 kilometers an hour. But hopefully it makes up for that with its range and we'll find out today. But with crossing train tracks on a scooter, you gotta be real careful. But if you hop over them quick like that, you just gotta make sure you don't get sucked in. in. And you just pop the wheel up a little bit. It works, works well. We're gonna take a little stroll down to the river and check that out. You see Jen is muscling over the gravel. Oh, she can't do it. Look at this thing sur surpasses her. <laughs> the yo sheep takes the lead. Woo! Low and steady wins the race. So the uh, yeah, the yo sheep handled that like a champ. It's ripping. And now uh, now we're gonna do a water test, take it into the river and see how it handles. So this is actually a six foot tide here. Normally I'd be riding in the water. We're on sand now. And you see the, the line on the bridge there. And we're gonna go in, see how deep she can go. It's supposed to be, no, I'm just joking. We're not gonna take it in the water. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Trent makes world takes. This was all full of ice like a week ago. And now no more ice. Don't slip, baby. These are slippery rocks. And there's a little bit of ice left. The front shock seems to be working pretty well and uh, jump it, it hits, it absorbs. Are we going to do a quick acceleration test between these two, uh, sport mode and speed three? Let's, uh, let's see, we got one, two, three, go. Yeah, full throttle, uh, see, so the gyro off the line, it does, it pulls a little harder. Don't hit those tracks too hard. Uh, but this one, it gets up to the 25. It just takes, it has a much softer start, which, you know, that is going to conserve your battery a lot more. So that could be a great thing, depending on if you, you want efficiency. All right, ready to switch off, baby? She hasn't tried the O-Sheep yet, so I want your honest opinion when we go and ride this. By the way, I wanted to show you, this does have the bar locks, just like the Gyro, which I really like. Unlike the Varla, it doesn't have that. But uh, yeah, take it away. Let's see what you think. All right, quick snow test. Oh, all right. Booyah! This thing takes really tight turns. Look at my turning radius on this. Oh! Didn't quite make it. Now the computer board on this thing is mounted on the bottom and it's fully removable right here. Easily replaceable and they say it's IPX64 I think it was. So that's nice. Uh oh. You got to turn it off first. I know, I just realized that. So how are you liking the O Sheep? Honest opinion. I'm honestly digging it, big time. So you like it more than the gyro? 
At this moment, yes. I think I got all these buttons figured out now. So to switch between gears, again, two presses on the power button, switches your gear. If you want to go to miles an hour, five presses on the light button. One, two, three, four, five. And that switches over to miles. Your trip resets every single time you start it. Sorry about the refresh rate on this. I, I don't know what that looks like. It looks terrible on the camera right now. Uh, and then two presses on the light switch, and that'll bring up your odometer. One, two. There it is. Two bars. Sorry about the background. Uh, we got two bars, and we've done seven miles. So I'll leave it on miles an hour. Let's see if it stays on miles an hour if I turn it off, though. And it does, look at that. I really like that it does that because on the gyro, this goes back to kilometers an hour every time you it turns off and turns back on. So I always just leave it on that. Oh, and I found one more thing. Remember I showed you you have to push first, just like the gyro, and then hit the throttle. You can't just stop and have power. Well, actually, if you hit the power button five times, one, two, three, four, five, it'll beep like so. And now you don't have to push to go. It just goes when you hold down the throttle. Very nice. These bars are actually getting a touch loose too. So I'll have to look at uh, securing those down when we get back home. You getting chilly or what? It's okay. starting to get cold out here, but we still got some sunlight. Well, let's rip it. We're gonna run the rest of this range down. What's up, man? Cool scooter, bro. Not mine, it's him. Oh, all right. You want to race or what? Come on, man. <laughs> now, as far as range, uh, Jen, how's yours feel? How many bars you got? She still got three bars, and I'm down to one bar on this. Of course, we did ride this a touch further since we did some videoing and such. But I'm at eight miles, one bar, and this is how fast it's going. We're going up a slight incline right now, eight mile an hour. But once we're back on the flats, it's cruising, picking up speed again. Got a slight decline. Let's see, uh, see what it does on the downhill. And you see we got up to about 16 on that hill. In fact, this is way more stable than even the gyro with one hand. I'm, unless I'm just getting better at riding scooters one hand, but this feels great. So while the range ain't looking too hot, keep in mind I am 180 pounds, six foot three, so high wind resistance too. And it is a little chilly out. We're in the 40s today. So, you know, with the warmer weather, you should get more range. Well, Jen said this thing was petite earlier. It does have ample space for you to put your feet on it. It's a little bit smaller than say the Varla, but uh, you know, plenty, plenty of room back here. And again, uh, the rear fender, you you wouldn't, well, actually you, unlike the gyro, it is strong enough, the gyro, uh, you can actually put your foot on there and it doesn't really have much flex. Yeah, I want it. No, we're not trash picking. Oh. Even on one bar, an absolute workhorse. All right. We're still running this. We're at 11 miles. It's been very slow. You know, like I'm full throttle right now doing seven. And you can see now the battery's just flashing. So no more one bar, but it's still cruising at seven. We're gonna, you could do a little pump like that. Like if you had to go somewhere fast, it was low on the battery. Just take your foot. Unlike the Varla, that's very hard to do on the Varla because the deck is so tall. And there it is, 12 miles. We're down to two mile an hour right now. And it's, it's done. Oh, it's still on cruise control. Uh, so it does start beeping at you and that starts flashing. And yeah, I guess that's not too far off from the range that they advertised. Again, it is it is chillier out today and I weigh, weigh a little bit more than some people. Uh, but yeah, if you're a hundred pounds, you might get you know a few more miles than that out of it. We just got back and I had the absolute best time on the Yoshif. I feel like everybody needs an electric scooter in their life and I cannot wait for good weather. It's gonna be so much fun in the summer. All right, well, final thoughts on this scooter. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the battery in and then I will let you know right here how long that takes to charge till we get the green light. Uh, final thoughts is I love it. I wasn't so impressed with the second half of the battery life. However, you know, it made it through. It did the 12 miles, no problem. Now, some things to address. Uh, all right, so you might've been wondering, well, well, if there's no key and there's no switch, how do I lock this thing? And as we already said, you kind of, you take the battery, bring the key with you, take the battery out of it, but then somebody can still just walk away with it. So there's actually an app that you can download. I don't think it's yet available on the market. I was looking, I didn't see it on my Android. However, with this app, you're gonna be able to put it in lock mode once you Bluetooth connect to this and if you do, and somebody tries rolling it, the back wheel is going to have high resistance and it's going to start beeping real loud. Kind of like the bird scooters and the other ones in the, in the city that you can rent. You can also turn the lights on and off and switch the gears on the app. And 
So that's gonna be a nice thing to have if you own this scooter. As you saw, Jen was thoroughly impressed with this thing and so am I in the overall build quality. It's a couple minor details that could use improving, but overall I think this was a very well-designed machine and it seems to be of high quality. I gotta say the bar lock on it is better than any other one that I've had. I mean, the Varla doesn't even include one and I had to completely modify the Varla lock that I got. It was just a, not, a, not a great design. And this compared to the gyro, I mean, the gyro one's on the board and it gets all clogged up with crud and dirt and it's not uh, spring action on this. This, you just fold them down. Well, let me just show you. And look at this, if you just line that up right, clicks in and you're walking down the road with a reliable bar lock. So I do really like that. I love that it has a swappable battery and well, I gotta look up the price, but if you just buy an extra battery for it, keep maybe even one or two, you're gonna have a ton of range out of this unit. So that's kind of the deal breaker for me. This is what makes it way better than the gyro in the end of the day or at the end of the day, should I say. Uh, I also liked, as I've said earlier, that it doesn't have any air in the tires. I mean, it's just more reliable. I almost forgot, let's try and tighten down these loose bars. Hopefully it's just a simple screw. And I did notice it's got a USB port right here for charging your phone. Nice and convenient. Look at that. It, it doesn't charge unless you have it on. Let's see if I turn it off right now, just make sure I'm right about that. Yeah, there you go. So I'm thinking there's a screw under the dash. It's one, two, three Phillips screws. And with those off, Look at that, pops right up. You got quick connectors in there in case you ever need to replace this. And it looks like five millimeter. Yeah, five millimeter Allen. So let me snug those down. And snugging those two did it. Nice and tight, but I do notice it looks like 2.5 millimeter little set screws on here too. Okay, some hex. A little snug. Yeah, those could use a little snugging too. This is why it's important to go over all the nuts and bolts on a bike. But if you notice something's loose, you tighten it up. Uh, before you cause damage or get hurt. All right, that wraps this up. So that wraps it up and I hope I didn't miss too much in this. Uh, if there are any updates or things I add, I always update the description and put that down in the comments too, if there's something major I forgot or any corrections. Uh, so again, if you have anything to add about this, feel free to. And big thumbs up to O Sheep for creating such a, such a nice little compact scooter that gets the job done. So. Again, those links will be down below, and I greatly appreciate you watching if you did watch this far. That's the third scooter review, and I'm looking forward to doing more in the future. It's a lot of fun shooting them, uh, and, and they'll, you'll probably see this O Sheep in future videos too, uh, doing parts runs, and kind of maybe me and Jen will take them up to Manhattan or down to Philly and do some, some scooting through the city, some adventuring. So yeah, all right, I'm just rambling now. I'll see you in the next video.